So, so thanks everyone for joining. And yeah, so really the idea of this is, is the first of a, of a series of kind of tech talks, virtual roundtables that we can put out to the community. Obviously the report has um, been launched, which is great, but it's a big beast and there's sort of these four key areas um, uh, that are kind of, that is sort of structured around in terms of the sort of those key findings. And uh, we've had, well, a couple of days ago, we had over 200 downloads of the report and that's rising. Um, one of a cabinet minister was briefed at the weekend, and the, and the report was referred to, and the, and the GVA and some of the stats were referred to um, in terms of a sort of an, an, an informal meeting around leveling up and the southwest. So that was very good. The DCMS, the head of DCMS, Gary Coyle, um, referenced it on a, at a national uh, event earlier this week um, with digital skills partnerships across the country, uh, and has shared it with colleagues across the DCMS. So. Um, and the Stroud Journal has run a really good piece about it as well, just to, just to show the range <laughs> of different things. <laughs> now, there's some other media coverage as well happening, but it's all typical regional media. It's popping up in random places at random times, you know, plus it's leading the way. Uh, this is live, I've run a big piece, and there's a couple of other pieces. So what I'll do at the end of the week, we'll do a little summary of some of these things, just to, as we try and keep on, on top of it. Um, and, and part of the sort of the values for you, you guys, but also, you know, I think the important... Uh, you know, because it feels like we got to the start line in a way, in terms of oh, you know, and all the all the back and forth and the final amends. But actually, we really now want this to sort of drive change and progress. Um, and so, so we'll record this recording, and then it's very informal, and um, we've got some sort of set up questions. But you know, wherever it goes, it, it goes really. So I'll um, uh, intro it, and you know, and today's topic really, it's it's sort of. You know, one of the areas that it talks about in the fall and the key the four, you know, four areas it talks about strength. You know, strength is, the, is the, around the range of tech, you know, and some of the great things around that and the diversity of tech. Don't try and sort of pigeonhole it all into one thing. Um, some of the issues around that. It's about funding, access to finance, etc. It talks about talent, but, it, but also it talks about collaboration actually um, as well. So uh, that's the area that we're going to talk about today in terms of whether that means geographically within sectors between sectors, even tech and other areas of, of the economy, et cetera. So um, my mouse has been a bit funny. Check that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's the idea is it's supposed to be lively, even though it's at nine in the morning, I don't know why I do this. But, uh, you know, I think um, we'll, 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 I'll ask you to do a brief, very quick intro at the start, so we'll just get that and, and then we'll dive in. But is this point you want to sort of respond to or pick up or I think, don't be hesitant and don't worry if you almost like, you know, let, let people have their, their say kind of thing, but that doesn't have to go on forever. And it's fine to sort of butt in or put your hand up or, you know, I think a bit of lively to and fro in, in the Zoom world is, is okay because we're all, we all know each other now. So hopefully no one will be offended. Um, cool. Okay. So hi everyone. I'm Dan Pritchard, co-founder of Tech Southwest. Welcome to the first uh, Tech Talk in a series around the new uh, report that we put out, uh, Southwest Tech Analysis 2022. One of the big uh, pieces in the, in the report is all around collaboration. And is collaboration the key to building on our tech strengths? And there's some great examples in that report, um, but there's also more that we can probably do. So joined by a really strong panel. So we're gonna briefly run around and introduce ourselves. So let's start uh, with Stuart. Could you introduce yourself, please? Morning, Stuart Harrison. Um, I'm from White Cap Consulting. I was uh, heavily involved in the report and did all the interviews. Um, but uh, I also run FinTech West, which is the representative body for FinTech in the region. Brilliant. Thanks, Stuart. Ben. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Ben Cooper from Tech Southwest. I'm the uh, funding and support lead uh, for Tech Southwest, 25 years of financial services. Uh, now work with scale up startups, but obviously Tech Southwest on the funding side. Fantastic. Thank you. Lisa. Hi there, Lisa Bryant from Deloitte. Um, I'm responsible for the marketing and business development function in the southwestern Wales. I support obviously our go to market as well with TechWorks, our Southwest Technology Hub, and our partnerships in the region. Fantastic. Uh, Louis. Yeah, uh, TMT sector lead for NatWest Commercial Bank here in the southwest. So I just have uh, a responsibility to lead on a few relationships for uh, NatWest Commercial Bank. Thank you. Caroline. Hi, I'm Caroline Orr. I'm the Brand and Marketing Director at ASTI Media. We're one of the supporting partners for the report. Um, we work with tech companies across the region and also we support Tech Southwest. Fantastic. Thank you. Richard. Morning, everyone. Richard Walters, CTO at Sensenet. Um, our R&D headquarters is on the Bristol and Bath Science Park. Fantastic. And finally, Andrew. 
And I'm Andrew Dean. I work in uh, the regional team here at the University of Exeter. University is one of the sponsors of the report. And it's my job to kind of build links across the southwest. Fantastic. And the other sponsor is Core Blue, who can't be here because their their senior directors are currently in um, Rwanda, where they work. They're doing a kind of key finance project with the National Bank there. So. Um, uh, yeah, the breadth and range of, of, of our tech companies uh, never ceases to uh, amaze me. So collaboration, you know, the region um, clearly has a strong uh, tech ecosystem. You know, we know that, we're, we're part of that, and, and the report you know, lays that bare. You know, it talks about universities as drivers of research and innovation and, and actually you know, linking up um, you know, the science parks. We've got Campus CenterNet, for example, you know, in terms of working in, the, in these hubs. But it also has some kind of uh, recommendations. Like, you know, we need to do more. We need to build more positive engagement. It cannot just be a talking shop. It has to be more action based. Uh, it talks about the sort of synergies between tech specialisms, actually. And, uh, you know, I think having Sentinet here with their expertise in cyber is a really interesting um, a part of that, potentially. Uh, need to, we need to understand the last two years around virtual and, and, and face to face and what that means. Uh, and there are still companies not engaging and there are still companies not, um, you know, reaching their potential around perhaps innovation, R&D, partnerships with universities, partnerships with other tech companies, that kind of thing. And of course, there's tech clusters like Tech Southwest and others that are trying to pull things together. Um, so I'm so I'm going to jump straight in. I'm going to go to Stuart in terms of challenges and opportunities. You, know, you, you are heavily involved in the report. Are, are there any particular highlights that you want to sort of draw out that, that you saw around this? Yeah, uh, I, I think the first thing to say, uh, which is a definite positive to I um, to, before I outline any, uh, any of the challenges, is that there is there is a real desire to collaborate um, that was commonly repeated. So the the intent is certainly there, which is great. Um, without, without that, we wouldn't get anywhere. Um, the challenges, I think, uh, really come out in a few key areas. Um, but they're nothing that can't be solved. Uh, the first, as you just touched on, Dan, is uh, a lot, a lot, lot of talking around collaboration rather than doing. I think that is an area that definitely needs needs action on <laughs> rather than uh, talking about. Um, the uh, very common feedback was, uh, you know, what, why are so many different organisations doing much of the same thing rather than collaborating? Uh, that was quite common feedback from, uh, you know, hubs and businesses. Um, which, as, in, which was, as in support organisations almost, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So potentially running the same programmes rather than, you know, collaborating on how could they slightly change the programmes to be more supportive um, and take a slightly different angle. Um, and the other aspect, of course, is the uh, geography that we've got in the southwest, where it is it's just impossible to try and say, you know, we going to collaborate as an entirety as the Southwest. Um, you, you simply can't do that with the, the, the vast geography we've got. So um, how we can go about some of those things and some of the, the uh, items that were discussed um, really are um, based along the lines, I think, that there's a lot of common culture, if I can call it that. Um, we have a similar sort of attitude in the Southwest. We have a lot of uh, approach to sort of things like tech for good, uh, very similar attitude, um, a, a lot of similar challenges as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what we can do, um, and this has been highlighted in uh, some examples, is collaborate within specific technologies across the, the region, um, rather than trying to do that generically and geographically. Um, and also perhaps understand as organizations sometimes, you know, when you're building an a, a ecosystem, a cluster, you're going to be a, amongst similar people sometimes. Um, and it's about understanding that sometimes you're going to be competing with them and sometimes you need to collaborate with them. Yes. And any successful sort of ecosystem is going to have to have that, that, that approach. Um, I think as well, we need to um, sort of recognize that there's a whole raft of different organizations that need to be involved in, you know, as supporting organizations in growing this. So the universities and representative bodies, professional services and so on. It's not just down to the tech companies. Um, and uh, I think there's you know, particular hotspots we can work on to grow and develop those clusters um but perhaps having two or three clusters within the 
uh, southwest, but equally they need to collaborate themselves. You can't, you know, grow a cluster in isolation. It's certainly, it's certainly big and it's certainly complex, isn't it? Which is, is which is, uh, I suppose, a challenge, but perhaps an exciting challenge to have in terms of what well, you know. There is lots of potential, but it's it's you can't do everything with everyone for every. No. You know, you've got, you've got to to prioritize. So, so, so an example of, of collaboration, perhaps. So, so Lisa, you know, this report itself has come about the lack of collaboration between organisations and the willingness to get involved. Uh, Deloitte and others. What's Deloitte's approach to collaboration? You know, you've got your TechWorks hub in Bristol. That's bringing together people different, you know, different fields. What's the sort of logic behind that, and how does that play out? Absolutely. I think bringing together those different roles uh, and having that talent based in region. We were very keen that the reason we set up TechWorks in Bristol, for example, was feedback from clients about not having always that talent that seemed to be very London centric. So having that in region where you have that kind of just down the road collaboration opportunity and growing that talent base in, in region as well. So I think we've developed out our TechWorks uh, capability from very much your .NET, your cloud um, engineers, your UX, your UI, so absolutely all spectrums of, of roles that are out there. Um, but it's then looking at actually how can we collaborate in the community? So in terms of working with the universities, specifically in Bristol, we obviously have, we've got UE, we're working with the Set Square partnership. So very much engine shed is on our doorstep in terms of where the Deloitte's office um, is based. Um, and then looking at some of the wider initiatives that you'd have, for example, at like the Institute of Coding, so very much looking at the digital skills uh, capability in region, how we can support those efforts, bringing skills and talent to the region. Um, you have like Bristol Tech Festival, for example, a great way in which you can showcase talents, uh, inspire others and spot those opportunities to, to collaborate further. Um, I think in terms of other collaboration opportunities as well, it's very much, as you say, so I think Stuart, you were saying the bigger companies um, looking to work with each other. So a fab case study that we like to cite is a recent one working with Skyports and Vodafone during the pandemic um, about delivering really essential COVID supplies to actually the Scottish Highlands, eight <laughs> hour round trip by road, 30 minutes by drone in terms of developing out that capability. But to Stuart's point, it's actually making known out there the aspiration, the will, the drive to want to collaborate, not always be seen in competition. Um, and I just want to pick up on a point you mentioned there, that Stuart, about clusters as well. It's an interesting um, discussion on the back of the report findings too. Is growing a cluster, is every cluster meant to grow in terms of size and scale, in terms of having hundreds and thousands of people, or is it growing spe specific expertise? Mm. That's a really interesting debate in terms of when we talk about growing and scaling clusters, what that means and why, because not all of them want to grow in scale, but we could be famous for a specific technology in region. That's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because, you know, the, the definition of, of, of collaborate, and I refer to my Oxford Dictionary here, to work together or to work with somebody else on a common project or with a common aim. But that, interestingly, also collaborate, it sits between Colosseum, which is like, you know, we come together to collaborate and then watch a horrendous bit of um, violence going on. Uh, and, coll and collage, you know, um, which is like a really nice sort of, you know, isn't, isn't that weird? Uh, there's some really difficult words as well that cluster around it, but I won't mention those. But um, that, you know, that, um, that purpose bit, that aim bit, you know, doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same uh, in different parts of the region. And because we are such a big region and there's so much variety in it in terms of the tech, the, the, the kind of the, the urban and rural mix, et cetera. So, so let me think, let me jump to Caroline because asking me, you work with different tech companies and public sector and others in different parts of the region. Yeah. Do, do, do the findings and what chime with what you're seeing in, in those kind of collab collaborations or, or the willingness to collaborate or the reasons why, you know, are, are we truly collaborating and what are the reasons behind that? So I suppose it does depend to some degree on what the definition of true collaboration is. Um, our job is often to share with the stories of collaboration, for example, science parks with education, tenants, etc. Um, and from our perspective, we definitely do see a willingness and desire to collaborate from both the public and private sector clients that we work with, um, such as um, Southwest Business Council, the LEP, the science parks, individual tech companies, etc. But in practice, it is quite often localised. Um, and obviously, we heard that at both of the report launch events as well. Um, and as Stuart said, I guess it's the vast geographical scope of the region that plays a part. Is it even possible to bring people together more from different ends of the region, engage them, excite them over the prospect of the success of an overall tech across the Southwest proposition? Um, how do you create that culture of inclusivity and, and connectivity? Um, so this is all about how we collaborate further to achieve success. And obviously there is this action plan that is laid out in the report, but, but how will we ensure it is adopted and achieved? I and mean, I think that's the really 
crucial point. So it's back to the less talk, more action, I guess. Yeah, and it's um, like, sorry, go on, Karen. Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, so, it, you know, it's it, it's about engaging and exciting people about collaboration. So then these, I, I feel that there would need to be specific objectives that and establish, you know, how would you measure true collaboration? How do you, how is, you know, the, these recommendations be made, this is the action plan, but what's the objectives and how you're going to, how is success going to be measured? Um, so, um, you know, so to go back to answer your question, really, there is evidence of lots of collaboration, but the report highlights the need for more. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's sort of why we're doing it and how you measure it, you, you know, because then you're learning, then you're learning as well, rather than just doing it for the sake, sake of it. Um, so, um, so Richard, you know, one of the key points in the report, mm -hmm. the Southwest Tech Center has such a broad range of specialisms, you know, cyber, marine tech, space tech, renewables. How is it? How important is it that sort of collaborations are forged not just within each field but across different specialisms? Is that where kind of the innovation can start to happen? You know, cyber, I guess, has to be one of those yeah. that's relevant to every vertical, every subsector of tech and beyond. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you can't always take somebody from healthcare and immediately deploy them on a on a space technology project. It doesn't quite work. Um, it's not quite that straightforward. But um, there's a lot of common skills across you know various um, you know R and D teams that are absolutely transferable. Um, you know, product owners, product managers, project managers, um, .NET, C Sharp developers, they're, they're transferable skills and they can work on projects in, in any sector, really. Um, but I think our experience of, of the Bristol and Bath Science Park, you know, we've been we've been on the park now 10 years. Um, this is the second company where we've headquartered R&D um, in the BBSP Innovation Centre. Um, and actually... First company was a company called SAS ID, 2011 that was founded. We sold that in 2013. Um, and actually we'd met Sensonet um, because they were on, you know, in the innovation center as well. Um, <clears throat> and then we subsequently acquired them around 2014. Um, and we've, you know, we've now grown out to, well, I'll be 55 full-time employees. We've got sadly 12, 13 contractors in the Ukraine. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll save that, <laughs> that topic for another day probably. Um, but you know whether you're building a cybersecurity solution or a, a fintech or a martech solution, you've still got a front end, typically a, a web interface. You've got a back end. You've probably got a database in the mix somewhere. Um, and actually, the database that, that Sensenet still use today um, is from a company that were originally called Just One DB, now called Edge Intelligence, um, and they were located in the next room to us in in the Innovation yeah. Centre on, on BBSP. So. Um, there is definite collaboration um, and I think one of the things that we found really useful from this is tighter relationships with the universities. Um, you know, we're doing so much more with the University of Bristol and UWE than we ever have done previously. Um, so it's, yeah, we love the area. Um, and I think also Bristol is such a vibrant happening city that there is a natural draw and um, certainly during lockdown, as we were you know, expanding the team, um, it was very, very difficult to um, you know, find talent within a commutable distance of, of Bristol or Bath, for example. So we did have to cast the net wider. People weren't necessarily open for a move you know, because of what was, what was going on in the world. So um, we did cast the net wider and we've hired people in uh, Shetland, in Aberdeen, um, in uh, ooh, Gloucestershire. Um, Loughborough uh, and actually a lot of them are considering or considered the role because relocating to Bristol was 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 attractive to the you know that generation so it's 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 worked out brilliantly for us you know really interesting and, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely need to come to Andrew next around universities and, and but you know at, at that point the last couple of years you know how I think it does feel like we're looking outwards more we are talking more we are connecting more geography doesn't matter yeah. so much we've gone through a bit of a digital shove in the last couple of years and some of that is, is clearly sticking i think uh in terms of how we recruit people how we how we partner up with people getting over some of the hurdles and barriers and you know and that's another whole new layer potentially in the mix of this world of collaboration which feels you know some of that is informal and disorganized chaos and some of that is more, yeah. you know in terms of the random we're in a science park great we know there's going to be some other people and there's going to be change and, and churn and people coming in and projects we're going to hear about you know that disorganized chaos bit but you still need those physical hubs to make that happen and then the more organized formal and i suppose universities to do both in a way and 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 sort of looking you know have the experts sort of thinking about collaboration and the theory behind it as well as um doing things so so andrew you know the report 
categorically kind of sets up the importance of universities in forging collaborative research, innovation projects with tech companies of all sizes. You know, that, that's I'm sure, you know, that, well, I know that's happening in the University of Exeter, but how, how can we do better in this regard? And, and what are universities like Exeter doing to support these kind of initiatives? Well, I think what we can probably do better is it's kind of the big challenge when you look at the region and that is working outside of you know our own fairly narrow geography so um we've got our you know we're very close with our own science park um we work through set squared we could probably do a little bit more through set squared as a kind of larger cross set i mean larger kind of cross geography organization um and it comes down to working with um partners like tech southwest who have the potential to put us in the room and in contact with organizations that aren't necessarily quite as limited to where we are um but i think you're right that kind of digital has has kind of changed the way that we operate and so we are now able to be in the room with people um, much more easily and we need to make sure that we actually do that rather than limiting ourselves i think the other area that um as well as the kind of innovation support and the science park support that kind of people are fairly familiar with is um innovating to try to stretch that support across the broader geography. So um, if you're in Barnstable, if you're in Tavistock, you're not near a, a, you know, a university science park, but actually there are things that we could be delivering there. Um, there are things which could go virtual and there's kind of support and people and things that we could actually help to do. So we're having you know discussions across our uh, smaller kind of peninsula region about how we can do that. And the other big area is skills universities are not necessarily something that you go to when you need an immediate answer to something but actually if the tech sector needs something in five years time then you know if you think about where we are and this is what the report does really well then actually we can have discussions about what kind of data science qualifications are going to be needed how specialized do they need to be or should they not actually be very specialized because the employers can do the specialization element what you need is uh, you know really smart data scientists in big numbers so okay so we can start talking about about what kind of skills um, can we deliver through our graduates, but also what kind of skills could we be supporting in other kind of ways as well through um, executive education and through kind of the, the CPD programs that we run. And, and there's a lot of different areas in there, which I, I suppose just reiterates point, you know, in terms of from innovation, R&D, through to skills and talent and forward planning, that long-term strategy, which, you know, one of the things the report calls for in terms of that sort of tech talent strategy, yeah. and, you know, working a little more around that. Um, and of course, there's funding. We've got uh, Louis and Ben on, on the round table as well. So let's go to Ben first and, and, then, and then Louis, because I know Louis kind of has a regional perspective as well as sort of working within Bristol and Bar. So, Ben, you know, you're leading with the Tech Southwest funding support for the sector. You know, what, what role does the collaboration have there? And can it really benefit a region when, you know, you think Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, we're down to Devon and Cornwall, uh, multiple city tech hubs, 14 universities? Is that going to hold us back or is that actually an advantage? Well, it's interesting. Um... I think the diversity in the region is, is, is you know, there's, there's, it's a strength and a weakness at the same time. And I think it's how we harness um, all those aspects um, together to, 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 to collaborate and, 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 to, and to showcase the region. Because uh, on the funding, from a funding aspect, you know, Bristol is probably a more mature area from, fun, from a funding perspective than they say further in, down into the southwest. Um, there's a big appetite outside the region and within the region to invest in the in the region but it's providing those opportunities to do that um, and so we've got a real responsibility to showcase the deal flow so the, the companies and the innovation that's happening in in all the different sectors and, and you know and as we said earlier they're happening in pockets as well and so there's opportunities to collaborate from a skills and talent and innovation point of view but there's also an opportunity to showcase that from a funding perspective um, we've got real opportunities uh, you know as part of the you know as you said I'm, I'm kind of leading on the funding aspect uh, for Tech Southwest and we've had a couple of meetings now um, with relevant providers of funding into the in, into the region um, and what's really um, encouraging is the willingness and the strength of that willingness to um, look at opportunities to, to deploy that cash into the region. So we've got a couple of challenges. Oh, we've got some challenges. I think we've got um, regional challenges from a, from a political point of view. And so we have obviously different LEPs and different combined authorities, et cetera, who, you know, and quite rightly are, you know, their first priority is their, is, is their own region. And, uh, and you can understand that, but it's, it's bringing those together. And um, as an umbrella organization, I think Tech Southwest has got a big role to play in so much as that we can talk to them 
together uh, and, in, uh, and show them the ways that um, collaboration and funding and showcasing and how we can do everything together as a much larger region can make it more efficient from a from a cost perspective uh, for those for those that are going to have to fund it, but also uh, how it makes it more effective um, in the region because we've become become better at deploying money and attracting money into the region. And also, actually, a big factor is stopping money leave the region because we, you know, I think there was a fact, uh, fact in or a, a stat in the in the in the report that says that eighty five percent of uh, funding leaves the southwest. Um, so if we could even, you know, if we can even turn the dial on that by five or ten percent by collaborating, by showcasing, by um, working together, that's a huge amount of money that goes that, that stays within the region rather than leaving it. Um, so we've got, you know, big responsibility. I think well, actually just one of the points as well I'd like to make is around the collaboration point of view and and, and, and the actions that are in the report. I think absolutely. We've, we've produced a report and the point you made at the start Dan, is that this is just the start um, we can produce a report and it can collect dust um, or we can do something with it and you know so we've got to take those actions um, but what's become clear in the sort of funding advisory board that we're running is okay <laughs> diversity actually is how, how do we how do we deliver these actions and how do we work to get together but but the one thing that is great is the willingness to do it um, so we just got to find a way of, of, of working together to deliver those actions yeah, I think the willingness is there. It's just um, the how, you know, and, and yeah. the priority is the how and, and the measure, you know. And but we can do it. I think the thing mm -hmm. is, is that we can do it because I, I get, I keep, you know, people say, oh, it's a huge task and it's a mammoth task and people have tried this before and things like that. But, but you know, it can be done. If there's, a, if there's a willingness in the room to do something, then we can get it done. And, and, and Louis, on that, on that sort of funding finance side, you know, it's in that mm -hmm. way, so you, you know, you're working internationally, nationally, regionally, you know, yeah. how all kind of, uh, you know how up for uh, organizations like yours in terms of on the ground yeah. that kind of knitting it all together to make yeah it no it's a really good point actually so um you know I, <laughs> despite all of the challenges which you know i think the report sort of outlines i think one of the things that's changed one, one of the major things that's changed probably over the last five years if you wind the clock back maybe five or even ten years is that larger organizations like ours um, have adapted and evolved to try to face off to the markets that they operate in. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, you're, you're, I think most um, tech firms in terms of startups and the makeup of those ecosystems will be quite at least, well, they'll be surprised at um, how aligned large corporates are now to supporting the communities and the ecosystems that they operate in. And so um, Lisa's sort of point around actually you know, we're holding up in Bristol, not just because this is a burgeoning ecosystem, but we're looking to add into all of the effort here. And there's a bit of resource because we happen to be a large corporate really, really challenged with me. And it's something that is, you know, a key part of, you know, what we're looking to do at, at, at the bank. And, you know, to the point that so Ellie Rowley, some of some of you would have met Ellie, some of you haven't to the point that, you know, Ellie's sole role is she doesn't look after any customers. She's got no real internal responsibilities. You know, she gets paid to solely face out into the market and bring parts of the bank into our ecosystems for everyone to leverage and, you know, take from. And so I think that model around sort of ecosystem building mm -hmm. is a massive opportunity. And, um, you, you know, quite rightly, some people are sometimes sceptical, Dan, I find, right? So if <laughs> I remember when I took this role sort of five years ago and I was, you know, fairly new into technology. So I, I was a clearly a banker first, but actually... Um, took an opportunity to sort of face off to the tech sector, people are quite rightly skeptical around your motivation or like, you know, what, what who are you and why are you interested in tech all of a sudden? Uh, and, and actually, you know, you're trying to bring the whole of the bank to support and that takes time, right? And that takes time. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, we shouldn't beat ourselves up about that. And I guess that's also a wider yeah. point as well in terms of proving, you know, collaboration, you know, it's a two way thing, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. And you will be found out if you are trying to take uh, and you're not willing to give, you know. And, yeah. You know, I think yeah. we're savvy as, as humans now in terms of this digital interface, as well as you know, you know, just the science bars we sit on that kind of stuff. So that's part of it, I guess, in terms of that, that learning and understanding about each other. Oh. Yeah, massively. And I, you know, this thing about adding in, right? You know, and I hear it all the time. You know, people that are probably sit at the heart of these ecosystems, basically the tech firms, and you know, you would argue, and you know, Set Squared, Andrew, and people like that. Um, you know it's very fairly challenge us on you know do we have the right motivations and over time we prove them that we do you know and so um it, it would almost be 
you know, I, I try to find the right word really, but absolutely challenge large organisations and leverage them and take everything you can from them because um, I can almost guarantee that most of them will give you time and energy and resource to help build. Because well, the one thing that unites the board is, you know, is, is we want a thriving sector, you know, because absolutely. Absolutely. Lisa, um, you, you want to come in there? Well, just to pick up on a couple of things Louise said there, a big thing that just resonated with me, you mentioned your colleague who is out in the market, just out there meeting people. Um, we had the, the Western Gateway Conference was earlier this week, and there was a big session there on scaling innovation and clustering, and actually saying, driven by many of the universities, um, actually saying that you never thought this would be a role title, but you're connecting clusters. I mean, who, who grows up as a child thinking, when I grow up, that's the job <laughs> title that I want. But the benefit there in doing exactly, it sounds like what your colleague is doing, Louis, is out there having those conversations, connecting up those clusters. Correct. Um, yeah. And I think the other, the other things about a long-term goal, it's a, 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 a shocking stat here, is people talking about having a long-term vision around clusters. This isn't kind of like a, a fad. This isn't a kind of what should we do for the next 18 months. And they kind of gave the analogy, uh, comparison really to Taiwan. Okay, semiconductors, they've had a 30 year plan. And guess what? Today, 92% of manufacturing semiconductors comes out of Taiwan because they have stayed true to 30 years, one goal, everyone on the same page, this is where we're heading. So when we talk about growing clusters, is it kind of, we shouldn't be talking about a five year, three, five year plan. Short term is a 20 year plan, for example, and it's having that long term vision and the right people behind that collaboration to, to deliver on a goal. And that approach, I guess, means it's going to have to be a varied approach because, you know, we have different strengths and, and different setups in different parts of, of, of the region, right? So, um, you know, there's, you know, there's no point focusing on cyber in Plymouth necessarily, but, you know, but, you know it's just a key part of, of the mix, but it's not the, the, the top. It's, it's, I mean, coming back maybe to you, Stuart, in terms of, you know, you spoke to many different sort of tech leaders and people running science parks and what have you. Um, is, is that the way do you think it's, it's going to evolve in terms of we have to have these kind of specific specialisms in different areas and then from, you know, and, and there's already clusters and some, and there's already kind of networks and, and some are international, some are national, some are regional, some branch out. That's the thing we need to nurture and encourage. Yeah, I think um, uh, specialism is a, uh, is a, and focus, if you like, is a is a key area. Um, you, the, it, I mean, you don't need to make it too narrow, um, but clearly, if you're looking at particular uh, sectors such as, you know, marine tech or fintech, you you you're going to work with particular businesses in those sectors, um, and not just tech businesses, but the uh, the science parks and the hubs and the accelerators and so on but I, I think the important factor is um within a cluster if you like that um you have to recognize that these are generally labels that we we're giving businesses we're giving sectors and um, the businesses themselves may think that they're doing something different or they might may have um you know feet in several camps and I, so i think it's important as well to um collaborate with related or sister technologies uh, so fintech with ai fintech with uh, cyber security and so on so you, you can't look at any of these things in isolation um but but focus is in, important i wonder if it's almost like a 3d model because you have these the specialisms which which are tied to sort of geographies in certain in certain parts of the region and, and that's really important sport in those but also you need sort of the, the cross-cutting uh, because talent, you know, or the randomness or the collaboration sometimes can be from with, without that rather than within that. So, you know, maybe that's the, the, and some of the like Tech Southwest and Tech Spa and, and, and other kind of networks. And, and, you know, maybe it's a sort of 3D model, you know, and um, there's, there's a lot of theory around collaboration and, and reports out there and other things in terms of, you know, how you get through these stages of, you know, true sophisticated collaboration. You know, I think one of the other challenges is do you focus on those who are willing or do you try to convert those? Because, you know, if you're, if you if you agree if you support collaboration and if you do it within your business, um, you know you're going to find other people like that. But there's there's probably whole rafts of companies out there who perhaps are not doing it and saying we're too busy. What's the point? It's a, it's a talking shop. I haven't got time. You know, do, do we focus on where we're really good at it, or do we kind of try and spread the net further to, to 
<laughs> change people's minds. Yeah, we, we've seen we've seen a bit of that, that Dan, actually, with the accelerator, because, you know, you go back to this point around motivation again. And actually, sometimes it's hard to it's very hard to win hearts and minds at the front end of every big exercise like this. Right. So sometimes doing the doing will bring people with you on that journey. And actually someone looking inwards, seeing that some of this stuff is beginning to kick off. Um, you know, you don't need a massive blueprint just to begin to throw people, the right people in a room and see how they interact and collaborate because the willingness is there. And, you know, a great example that we've seen as a result of the launches actually was with Ben and um, Coots Bank, our centre of excellence for high net worth individuals. And so all of a sudden we've got this spark going now where we're going to try and connect up a few sort of high net worths with, you know, deep pockets and hopefully a few businesses that need funding, right? And begin that education journey. So it's like, you know, that, that definitely wasn't planned. That was in no one's mind that that was going to happen. And yet, you know, here we are making things happen and hopefully we'll spin, activity will spin out the back of that, right, Dan? So it's not always about a blueprint, is it, I think, yeah. as well? And, and, and Caroline, you know, are you seeing, so the companies you're, you know, is because one of the things is, is getting in the room. No, I can't hear you properly. Uh, sorry, well, I'll, I'll try that again and see. Can you hear me now? You've got to... I'm going to go off and go on again. Okay, we'll come back to you. So, so one thing I'm going to go off and go on again. Yeah. Um, Let's while well, Caroline's doing that and, and struggling with tech, ironically, um, you know one of the things I I, I, I thought last last week was with, with, with the tech um, report launches. We had an esports festival the week before. The buzz in the room, the energy in the room, and that's one of the things we've missed the last couple of years. So, you know, is that just going to happen? Do we need to think about that? You know, getting the you know the tech companies, the universities, the physical hubs. Has anyone got any thoughts on that in terms of is that a must do? And and, and are there lessons in the last couple of years and how we you know, that kind of, you know, Richard's alluded to that point about, you know, and, and there's companies that probably haven't stepped stepped into our, onto our university campuses, into our science bars, don't know, you know, you can do a tour of Bristol Robotics Lab and go, oh my God, I just didn't know all this stuff was here, you know, as I did yeah. about two years ago. So no, how do we do more of that? You know, that's, that's um, uh, I think that's, you know, a key part of it. We've got these amazing facilities and people and, and seeing is believing sometimes. I think we've got it. You know, I think this is the whole point around the showcasing. Element. We've we've got a real big, real, a massive opportunity across the southwest. We've got fantastic facilities. I think it's you know some of it's you know, leading edge. You know, as you you made the point around the, the robotics lab lab at um, University of West of England. If you if you walked into Future Space and said and you didn't see beyond that wall of the, the absolute um, size and scale of what's going on behind that behind that white wall is is, is incredible um, and I think you know I think I'm right in saying um, uh, that it's probably the largest robotics lab in Europe and it's it, it's uh, it's just incredible that we've got these types of facilities um, and, and it's across the region and you know, we have these specialisms in marine tech and agri-tech and, and, and all and fintech and all these different things I'm going to jump um, in. how do we so Andrew how do we bring those specialisms you know like climate science you know is there relevance there to these to smaller tech company that might be working on a specific product and a little bit of r d without even realizing it almost and, and uh you know and on their doorstep you know it, are these experts are these facilities are roots in you know to kind of yeah. sorts of things how, how do we do more of that um i'm tempted to say through people like tech southwest because that relationship is going to have to be organic it's going to be something which is really hard to kind of make people go into the room so they have to they're going to have to perceive a benefit um what we are very short of in the southwest are large employers um which we're, we're really short of really big um successful especially tech organizations so um we've got a lot of organizations which you can call lifestyle organizations we have a lot of fairly small businesses um and they will network reasonably well between them but where we have real specialisms like um, the Met Office and the kind of research that's going on around climate science, we probably can do more to try to get people linked into that. So I think that's a conversation that we have to have with people who are working at a, at a broader geography than the university is. Um, at the moment, we tend to work very much kind of extra, extra region and off our campus in Penn Rim. But, um, you know, uh, the work that we're doing around climate science is kind of globally significant. We've got five of the top 10 um, global, uh, global climate scientists are actually based in the extra um, geography. So um, that's an area where we can lead. And it's something that we should be working with yourselves on more. Okay. I want to jump to Richard as a, as a tech company that, that feels like collaboration is part of, of, of you know, built into your DNA. You know, why do you do it? And have you got any examples of, of you know, the difference between a, collab a good collaboration and perhaps one that, that fizzles out or doesn't, you know, 
uh, you know, in terms of your organization, perhaps it's the, the, the services you develop, how you recruit talent, how you partner up, how you find clients, how you, you, you draw from universities, uh, you know, what, because that's one of the things we're trying to get to, you know, when it works, it's brilliant. And, and sometimes, you know, collaboration ecosystems and things that there's sort of, for some people, and for some tech companies, it's a bit too woolly, you know, so have you got evidence that it works? Yeah, very much so. I mean, if you look at look at our platform, our platform does a multitude of, of security things, um, but not everything in that platform is ours. Um, and so there's there's a lot of you know OEM relationships involved in building out a, a complex solution these days. Um, you know, you don't write your own antivirus engine because that would be pointless. So you OEM that in. Um, you wouldn't necessarily try and go out and categorize every single page on the internet. Richard starts talking about cyber. <laughs> and then we lose him. I'm, I'm not. I'm not into conspiracy theories, but um, uh, Richard, if you're there, come back, please. <laughs> um, See, when it comes to collaboration, the, the tech is brilliant, isn't it? When we're probably... Um, we missed you for a bit there, Richard. We, 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 you dropped out for about 30 seconds as soon as you mentioned um, uh, cybersecurity. Yeah, there seems to be something going on with the internet today, doesn't there? <laughs> Don't know, you're the one, you're the expert, you tell us. Caroline's <laughs> dropped out and, and now my, my connection is in, unstable. But yeah, what I was saying was... Um, you don't build everything yourselves in, in in software these days. There's inevitably things that you're going to buy in. Um, and so you've got those OEM relationships with antivirus engines, URL filtering databases, and so on. Um, and what we always look for is OEM relationships that are two-way, they're inbound and outbound. Um, those are the ones that generally tend to be the most successful. Um, if it is one way, then they do tend to fail of Either the, either the technology goes off the boil from that particular provider um, or the commercial terms no longer work because it's a one-way relationship and the, the people that are supplying get greedy and the price gets you know ratcheted up over, over time. Um, but if it's a two-way relationship, then that's far more sustainable. Um, you know, everybody's got skin in the game and those relationships tend to be extremely successful. Um, I, don't, I wonder if there's any evidence out there, you know, the, the ones, the, the organisations that are more outward looking, you know, be that around, you know, you know, complementary parts of the service that they can then offer or, or skills, you know, versus the inward looking, you know, because, you know, things are things change so quickly. If you're an in, quite an inward looking company thinking, right, this is our product. Great. Let's work this out, bring it to market, da, 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 and, and off you go. You know, you see that in the sort of startups, you know, and the evidence around, you know, a single sole founder versus having, you know, uh, you know, a, a, bit, a team even at the start in terms of that collaborative mentality and, and challenge, and, and, yep. and you know, I wonder, I wonder if there's any sort of evidence around. I'm sure there is. So, so I think you know, in the final few minutes, you know, I suppose the thing is, what do we need to do? It feels like um, you know, there, there needs to be priorities around this. There's not a one size fits all. It's about some of it's about nurturing and encouraging and, and building what's already happening. Are there any particular points that you sort of have drawn from the report, perhaps the findings in this area or how it chimes with other parts of the report in terms of what we need to do. And certainly, you know, connecting more and, and talking more and understanding each other, what we're trying to achieve in terms of, you know, Tech Southwest, our members, you know, um, the universities, you know, that's the starting point. And then we've got to move from that to concrete actions that are going to make a positive difference and ultimately help the sector thrive, right? So I suppose, you know, in the final few minutes, is anyone got a particular point about, you know, for, for them, what our priorities should be, you know, with that short term, medium or, or longer term? Someone just dive in. And, and... I, I think I'd like to uh, pick up on a point which Ben alluded to, which was, um, which is very evident that with the possible exception, exception of high end funding, um, it's all under our own control. Um, so if we've got the desire there to make it happen as a collective region, we can make it happen. So from my perspective, um, I see a lot of intent and will. And uh, so I think, yeah, we need to put a put a plan of action in place. Yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely echo that. I think um, let's not wait because um, you said earlier on, I think there was a collaboration lies between collage and Colosseum in the in the dictionary. But I mean, the, what you've got here is a kind of collage of 
kind of patchwork support across very fairly small geographies that is sometimes in competition is sometimes not is sometimes very similar to what's next to it and sometimes isn't um and the other word was coliseum wasn't it which is you know we're all fighting over the same the same pots of money quite often because they don't fit to the geographies very well so when we've got this report and we've got the kind of wood in the room we should look at how we can actually take it forward but let's not wait around because i don't see uh, money coming in large amounts across large broad geographies to enable us to do this kind of work um, it's going to be in kind of county size boundaries if we're not careful so what we need to do is you know decide ourselves what we're going to do and try to make that happen anyway thank you andrew yeah two great points and great positivity as well from Stuart and andrew and any, anyone else is reflecting on that in terms of you know the be that you know, well, I mean, at least from Deloitte's aspect, you know, you're covering a very big region. Uh, collaboration is obviously key in terms of your learning and knowledge and the support you're putting in. Uh, is there something that you know, whether that's Tech Southwest or, or, or a group of organisations should be doing in this next phase of the, of the evolution of the tech sector? Um, reveal it now, please. <laughs> I, I think I kind of echo some of the, the conversations that we've had, and I think actually. I think some of the launch event discussions have been if it is at two sections, two parts of the of the region. But actually, we, what we don't want next is creating another talking shop. So when we say getting together in the room, a collaboration of the willing, and there has to be that kind of these are the goals, we're behind it, getting those measurements in in terms of attendance and deliverance on actions and absolute evidence of moving this forward. Because in, there's a trust to be gained, there's a, a mission to achieve between us. So the willing is here. And I think whether it is from the events, whether it's from people, Stuart, you spoke to during the kind of the interviews and collating the report, who specifically are there, what on top, what topics, and then how we actually get dates in diaries, is in and whilst it's fresh, the momentum, the publicity around the report's been fantastic from everyone at Tech Southwest. Um, so we want to get behind that, really want to be a willing partner. This list is growing. So it feels like, you know, we're in charge of this. Don't wait. It cannot just be a talking shop. You know, evidence to back it up know the doers already and, and activate them and, and support them you know you can, they're probably already identified we know a lot of those people across the tech sector anyone else want to add to that brilliant list that we're, we're building at this point in the final couple of minutes so i think from um, so i think from 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 my perspective and from you know certainly i've seen in the funding round i think uh, what we're saying you know what lisa was just saying there is absolutely spot on we, we we do have the capability to do it it just needs to be coordinated i think the issue is that we've got all these people that are willing to work together um it's just bringing everyone together to focus on the right things um so we can make it happen and i think that's it it's it's about it's about formulating a plan everyone's on the same page everyone's pushing towards the same thing and the, and the, and the time on semiconductor thing was uh, example was a was a perfect one where you know people all pull in the same direction we can make a huge difference and, and and that's what we've got to do we can't just sit here and go yeah yeah we can do all this we can do all that we've got to do it um but we need but it needs coordination and that's that's the key and caroline has put in the chat with a, with a wobbly internet connection you know, what is the action plan for the action plan yeah, that's my vague point is what's next dan what you know you've got the action plan how is the action plan going to be action because i echo everything lisa said yeah. and i would agree. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think one of the things is, you know, I think one of the things we have done, you know, there's a Southwest cluster group. So TechSpark, you know, TechSpark helped, you know, the, the, the birth of Tech Southwest, you know, and, 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 and they were really supportive at the start, rather than seeing us as a, you know, you're going to come in and take our members. You know, when Digital Taunton started and, and joined the group, we said, well, talk to this cluster, Sopa Cornwall, because they're probably about five years ahead of you and, and, and straight away learn from them. And we got over some of those you know kind of chips on our shoulder around territory or, or we're doing this you know we're good at it you know we don't need you we, we got through that phase and actually we realized just information sharing joining the dots joining the dots joining the dots was great and out of that came things that we couldn't have predicted at, at the start so i think that idea of um you know people are willing bring together to do the right things but also helping people understand this doesn't mean it's to the detriment of other things you know there's layers you can, you can do this you can have regional layers you can have city layers you can have rural areas you can have tech specialism layers and that is all evidence as Stuart clearly yeah. found of a thriving ecosystem rich and diversity uh, which sometimes is a challenge around creating a compelling narrative which, which we're coming to at the time but is all is all part of the the, the, the exciting part of this you know it is big it is complex but actually focusing on the, on, the, on those things and the willing people we've got the willing people we've got the connectivity now i think across the region that probably wasn't there a few years ago so now the action plan or the action plan for the action plan uh is, is what we need and and um you know so uh, oh, I'm I'm on, this, on this round table who are going to be part of that going forward so that's 
Fantastic. So look, thanks everyone for that really great discussion. Uh, and thanks for listening, um, everyone. This is part of a series, uh, Tech Talks uh, from Tech Southwest. Check out the Southwest Tech Analysis Report. It's on the Tech Southwest website. Um, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, so, everyone. thanks, everyone. That was great. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much for being part of that. And um, yeah, that was good. It was good. It just flowed. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's tricky. You know, there's a fair few people, but hopefully people will manage to, to have, have their say. And um, yeah, I think we'll let you know when it's going live into the social. Uh, yeah. I was just, yeah, I was just going to, uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I thought, I, I thought that was really great, and I think, and, and I think, um, what I'm hearing more and more, and particularly from post the launch of the report, in some ways, is, is, is Lisa's points and Stuart's points, and the points that everyone's making is that there is this huge willingness to do something, but it, uh, but Caroline's point was a really good one. What is the action plan for the action plan? Because we, you know, we've we've got actions within the report, and and so just using the funding advisory board as an example. So we we held the report well, our, our latest meeting last Monday. So post the report, the report and, and 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 as chair of that, my plan for that was basically to go through the actions in the funding section and just say, right, this is what we need to do. This is what the report's telling us we need to do to 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 improve funding within the region. Okay. So I have British Business Bank and Innovate and, uh, you know, and I want to expand that group and don't get me wrong, I've started it quite small because I don't want it to become a cast of thousands, but I'm going to expand the group into the enablers and, uh, and sponsors and partners and everyone, everyone who can assist in the delivery of those actions. Um, what I want to do is, is literally is, is to sit down and go, right, who's doing that? Who's doing that? Who's overseeing that? And it will be an element of almost there's a, an umbrella of who's keeping on everything going on but that's not to say that tech smart aren't going to do their bit and, and yeah. you know and stuff like Cornwall aren't doing their bit it doesn't take away from what they're doing it just means that if we're all pushing in the same direction yeah, yeah. um we're all doing our own bit and that also makes monitoring we have a common goal. Easier as well because if you've got the bodies that are also looking out and seeing how everyone's getting on and, and reporting on that as well you know? yeah so so one of the things is what are the vehicles out there already so there's a southwest clusters group so this collaboration piece feels like, well, actually, that Southwest Clusters group should look at that. And also, yeah. we should see where the gaps are, because it's, you know, it started off as the kind of the virtual, you know, the software Cornwalls, the tech access, mm. the digital Somerset, Silicon South, tech spa tech. Then it kind of grew, then Engine Shed were part of it. Future Space have joined that as well. And, yeah. and you know, and so, okay, well, the, we are the collaborators, actually, in terms of one part but one part of it. Or, we, you know, our job is just to nurture and, and help some of this stuff happen without actually working on the tech ourselves a, 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 lot, a lot of the time. Yeah. So it's like, okay, should we... You know, think about that as a vehicle to sort of you know so what other things that place sorry, though, Dan. sorry ben no no you carry on lisa that's fine i was going to say i think that tech south was the perfectly place to convene almost two groups all the sponsors making sure you've got a university represented i think that the private equity teams need to have a voice at the table for these initial kind of kickoffs yep. and whether there is the kind of that that template of the uni the big kind of like sponsors that are involved here everyone on this call that is more devon and cornwall focused because that mm -hmm. chat might be different to yep. the one that's more north end of the, the southwest region. Yeah, it definitely and is. Yeah. Dates and diaries just kind of get this whilst it's hot with the sponsors. And mm -hmm. then, like you've just said, Ben and Dan, if there are other people you think actually they need to join the conversation because I know that they're involved in this, bring others in as you need to. But I think that absolutely get dates and diaries and tech southwest. Yeah, on. it's a challenge between, you know, because there's 170,000 people working in tech in the southwest and we can't all jump on a call and collaborate. Um, no, that's right. No, 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 no absolutely. Yeah. I think to kick off that initial yeah. kind of chat, that would uh, get us going. It's understanding the you know like the leadership forum you know leadership forum was a made up thing a year ago because of the pandemic and actually people just knew that tech CEOs wanted to talk and, and now was the time to do it and, and get them on a, on a on a group you know it hasn't got it's got a bit of a purpose but not much so I suppose it's probably finding some of these forums vehicles other things that are already out there you know cyber as the southwest you know cyber cluster down this end of the region is there's, there's, there's you know some of these things are really well established and it's um uh then it's, yes it's, it's, it's lots lots to think through around it but you know it's brilliant that everyone on this in this group is willing and, and yeah I, I i think uh tech southwest uh, ideally placed to sort of uh carry the flag if you like uh for making this happen um i think the university involvement uh is fundamental across the region um because they are very involved in um obviously generating the talent but also uh, involved in the, a lot of the, the science parks and accelerators and so on. But uh, equally, organisations like Deloitte that are you know, involved and shown willing can make a huge difference given, given the sort of profile and clout they have. 
Um, I, I think the only area that I uh, would like to see support from uh, uh, on the government side is that support and not not um yeah not to get too involved so li leave it to the people that are really going to take action and support what we want to achieve rather than i think we can't wait for the politics you know exactly yeah, yeah no, absolutely, just absolutely. Just cycles we've got to make it very clear what what the opportunity is what the benefits are in terms of you know you know the bigger the, the sector the talent the jobs the gva the, the you know the amount of money that's pouring into the treasury from tech you know that's what gets some um, ministers excited and people you know whitehall excited and we've got to sort of demonstrate that but not be held back by the kind of local politics and some of the challenges around that because it's going to it's going to change uh and um we've got to crack on with those uh, you know we know the doers we've got to just you know just um do more around that um, yeah brilliant okay well watch this space and um Thank you. Jump. thanks so much everyone and um yeah well uh yeah thanks everyone send a note around for the next one part two i can't even remember what the topic is but um I think, yeah, talent, I think. Talent, yeah, okay. So, yeah. I'll, I'll thank you, everyone. Thank okay, you. thanks, Lisa. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. everyone. Bye, thank everyone. Richard. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Stuart. Bye. Cheers.